Hey everybody out there in the Y.O. universe, this is Survivor 2002 coming at you again from the Secret Lair in Virginia. This is the AI Recap Show for Wednesday, April the 15th, 2009. Basically, first of all, I wanted to give props for that opening of the show. It was un friggin believable I think um, if they ever get the opportunity, they should have Quentin back as much as they possibly can because the opening of that show was the most stylish I think I've ever seen American Idol at. I don't know if Quentin actually directed and edited the opening or if Bruce Gowers just uh, got everything down pat as far as Quentin's style goes because the, the, the grainy film stock look that they used, the graphics, the way that they shot it and edited the whole thing, pretty much reminiscent of Grindhouse. And um, it was really, really nice to see that. So, yeah, have Quentin back more if you can. But second thing after the opening, the group sing usually makes me want to climb up on top of my roof and jump off into a pit of spikes. But actually, this time around, it wasn't horrible. Not to say that it's still the best feature of the show, but for some reason, uh, the performance of Maniac by the uh, top seven wasn't as horrific as I expected. And Matt was pretty good, ironically enough, because of the outcome of the show later on. But it was definitely watchable this time, even though the choreography, well, <laughs> there really isn't any choreography to speak of. And one note about the musical performances, Jennifer Hudson, it was great seeing her. She's, uh, she's really in fine form. And considering everything she's been through, it's just awesome to see her. Not well, I don't want to say the top for a game. I think the best is still yet to come for her, but she was incredible. I kind of felt, though, like she was cheated out of a uh, golden opportunity because I think both of those segments were taped. As I mentioned before, if you look at the judges' table, those are not the judges and those are definitely seat fillers. You could really see it this time though from both of the tape performances. And I think she was really robbed of an important opportunity to actually face Simon in all her glory after being dissed so badly in her season of the show and being so unceremoniously kicked off when she was. But actually, well, as we all know, not winning the show did more for her than winning did. But I still think it would have been great television for her to be able to actually see and speak to the judges, Simon in particular. As far as the second musical performance, Miley Cyrus, nicest thing I can say about that is two words. Bathroom break. Okay, we've talked about that. Moving on. So when it came down to picking the bottom three, there were no surprises whatsoever. Anoop, Lil, and Matt. I kind of suspected Matt was going to end up there, but I thought maybe Danny had the slightest possible chance of ending up there, but it was Matt. So, bottom three. Anoop goes back to the couch is safe. That leaves Matt and Lil. Surprisingly enough, Lil ends up being safe as well, and Matt is our guy in the hot seat. Now, I've come to suspect even more with this episode in particular that the judges probably had a powwow way before they announced this judges safe, and they probably deliberated way ahead of time on who was having this used on them versus who wouldn't. And I say that now because on any other show where judges were featured in determining the outcome of a reality show competition like this, their behavior would have been pretty much considered beyond rude. Because here's Matt singing for his life, trying to get a foothold and, and desperately clinging on to what appears to be his last chance to stay on the show. And the judges are at the table laughing, talking, at one point, they have their backs completely turned to them, all four of them. And they're just pretending like crazy to be deliberating. And once again, the play acting is not working at this point. It's like, come on, people. 
you knew way ahead of time that you were going to use this either on Matt, on, I would say, Danny, and definitely Allison or Adam if they were up for elimination. But it wasn't such a big shocker when it turned out that they awarded him the chance to redeem himself next week after all. But it's an old headline now. Matt will be coming back next week along with the rest of the top seven. And this time, two people are going to be going home. I've got a funny feeling that once again, it's going to be Matt and Lil. And this time, they're going to be taking that uh, permanent walk of shame. Well, permanent walk of shame to the summer tour. But anyway, the show went better than I expected with the exception, of course, of the judges' deliberations. Okay, it's tired, it's played out, and thank goodness, now it's over. The judges' save is gone. We've got, I guess, maybe two or three weeks left for the finale. Now we can get down to brass tacks and really start seeing who's gonna step up. And not to burst anybody's bubble, but I've already picked out Adam as the American Idol for 2009 anyway, and I have no reason to believe things are going to be any different unless something on par with a crash at the Daytona 500 happens in terms of Adam ruining his own chances, and that, boys and girls, is not about to occur at any time that I'm aware of. So there you have it. Next week is Disco. What will they be doing for that week? Well, mosey on over to the Fantasy Song Camp clip that comes up next, and we'll discuss that a little bit more. So until next week, I hope you all have a good weekend. Take care, and I will talk to you on Tuesday night.